Experts admit global warming predictions wrong. What? No, there's, there's more to it than that. Fear of global warming is exaggerated, say scientists. Excuse me, they didn't say that at all. Climate but... alarmists finally admit we were wrong about global warming. Oh, look, can you all calm down? That's enough. Report shows that the world isn't as warm as the green doom mongers warned. Shush. Our scientists got their Shut global warming. Shut up! Stop copying and pasting off each other for one minute and read the actual study you think you're all commenting on. Even the authors of the study were so appalled at this misrepresentation of their work that they issued a public rebuke to these incompetent commentators. We'll take a look at that in a minute. The study was published last week in Nature Geoscience by Miller et al. and looks at the cumulative carbon budget, specifically how much carbon needs to accumulate in the atmosphere before average global temperature rises by 1.5 degrees centigrade from 1870 levels. What they found was that the accumulated carbon needed to reach this level is probably much higher than had been previously estimated. At the current rate of carbon accumulation, the study says we'll probably reach that level in about 20 years' time. That kicks the can down the road about another 13 years, giving us, as the authors describe it, a bit more breathing space. The study's other conclusion is that if we begin implementing the Paris Climate Accord right now and every country aggressively follows the step-down approach of carbon reduction agreed to, then that time frame will be pushed much further down the road. It's not impossible, they say, to keep reducing carbon emissions and push that cumulative total even further into the future until CO2 emissions are effectively reduced to zero and the temperature rise is stabilised at 1.5 degrees. So what the study says is very different to the claims of the headlines and the commentators who didn't bother with any of this detail. All they chose to read was that we won't hit 1.5 degrees for another 20 years and that it'll stay at 1.5 degrees, which they figured is nothing like the high rates of warming that had been forecast. Ironically, these commentators missed the point that this will only happen if we drastically reduce carbon emissions, something they've always opposed. James Dellingpole, who's largely responsible for setting off this copy-and-paste stampede, claimed the IPCC's doomsday prediction of 1.5 degrees centigrade by the year 2022 was well and truly busted. The problem is, as two of the study's authors later pointed out, the IPCC never made any such prediction. In fact, they wrote, the IPCC specifically assessed that temperatures in the 2020s would be 0.9 to 1.3 degrees warmer than pre-industrial, the lower end of which is already looking conservative. Anyone who had trouble to read our paper would have found this IPCC AR5 Chapter 11 projection helpfully labelled on two of our figures and clearly consistent with our new results. And yes, here it is, highlighted in orange. It's funny, when I was alerted to this study, I took a quick look at the abstract, and it was pretty clear what the paper was trying to say. I posted a response on my channel saying, my bet is that the so-called sceptics are now going to hold up this paper and say, see? And I was dead right. Dellingpole decided the paper was vindication. In Breitbart News, he wrote that Michael Grubb, one of the authors, is claiming that the facts have changed, which they haven't. Climate sceptics have been saying for years that the IPCC climate models have been running too hot. But Dellingpole's completely misrepresenting Grubb's statement by making it sound as though he's saying that the facts about the climate models have changed. If we go to Dellingpole's source, the Times newspaper, it asserts that Grubb admitted that his previous prediction had been wrong. He stated during the climate summit in Paris in December 2015, All the evidence from the past 15 years leads me to conclude that actually delivering 1.5 degrees centigrade is simply incompatible with democracy. But Grubb wasn't talking about his previous prediction on climate. He was talking about his view back in 2015 that people wouldn't be prepared to take the necessary steps to reduce their carbon emissions and get their energy from renewable sources. How do I know that's what he meant? because I tracked down the original quote. Here it is in its entirety and in context in the Daily Telegraph, Dellingpole's host newspaper, dated December 12, 2015. 
Professor Michael Grubb of University College London said achieving 1.5 degrees centigrade would require higher energy prices and more onshore wind farms. However much people profess to care about climate change, they do not seem willing to vote for this, nor do politicians seem willing to really try and persuade them, he said. All the evidence from the past 15 years leads me to conclude that actually delivering 1.5 degrees C is simply incompatible with democracy. So Dellingpole has lifted a quote where Grubb was talking about his error in thinking people wouldn't switch to renewable energy and made it seem as though he was talking about an error in his climate model. Then Dellingpole doubled down in the Sun newspaper. This scare story, we now know, was at best an exaggeration, at worst a disgraceful fabrication. But while a handful of reviled and derided sceptics have been saying this for years, it's only this week that those scientists have fessed up to their mistake. Now that we know Dellingpole misrepresented the quote from Grubb, and that the IPCC didn't make the doomsday prediction that Dellingpole reported, The only mistake is the discrepancy between Miller's models and the IPCC models that I described, the level at which cumulated carbon needs to reach 1.5 degrees centigrade. So how big and significant is this mistake? The best way to describe it would be to say that it's quite big on a small scale, but quite small on a big scale. The authors of the study say the discrepancy is relatively modest, For a global temperature rise of 3 degrees centigrade or 4 degrees centigrade, this discrepancy would be relatively insignificant for the remaining carbon budget. Where the discrepancy is significant is for the cumulative carbon needed to reach a temperature of 1.5 degrees, and they say that's because we only need a further increase in temperature of about 0.6 degrees to reach that figure. The researchers say it's such a small amount that even a minor temperature discrepancy between the two models would shift that date considerably. Study authors Richard Miller and Miles Allen said they'd even explained why there was a discrepancy at a press briefing. We took pains at the briefing to stress the discrepancy was likely due to other, more transient factors. Those who were there evidently understood. But it seems Dellingpole either wasn't there or he didn't understand. If you're still inclined to believe the armchair commentators and the cries of Fear of global warming is exaggerated, say scientists! Or if you fancy yourself as an armchair commentator in the comments forum here, for goodness sake, read what the study's authors themselves wrote about how their study was being misreported. After reasonably accurate initial reporting, suddenly our paper was about a downgrading of the threat of climate change, when it was actually nothing of the kind. Our predictions for warming rates over the coming decades are identical to those of the IPCC, and we do not assess the impacts of climate change for any warming level. I don't think I can sign off with anything more erudite than this last word from the authors of the paper, who singled out Dellingpole and left-wing Member of Parliament Graham Stringer as the most egregious of the junk science pundits. Debating the current level of human-induced warming and how it relates to the 1.5 degrees C goal feels a bit like discussing how best to steer a spacecraft into orbit around Saturn, while Dellingpole and Stringer are urging their readers to question whether the Earth goes round the Sun.